Coming up on today's show, we have a garden soup with just about everything in it. You're just gonna have to stay tuned to see what's in it, plus an awesome dessert. I'm Rhonda Fitterer. And I'm Laverne and Didi. And welcome to Cooking Crave. Today we have a submitted recipe from Denise Prozart. She's submitted many fabulous recipes. If any of our viewers has tried them, you can attest. This one is a little bit different, so you're gonna have to bear with us. Get beyond maybe some of the ingredients in there and just try it because mom's tried it and says it's fabulous. Absolutely. And, and I'll be honest, when Denise told me about this soup and telling me of the ingredients, I thought, no way. There is no way I would try this or make it. But she made it and she brought me a bowl to work and it was great. We, I loved it. So, I, so, so viewers just take mom's advice, just try it. So these are the ingredients for the soup if you're gonna, if you're gonna try this recipe. And I really do suggest you do. Break out of your little, little mold and try something new. Right. So what you're gonna need are 10 potatoes. We're good there. We're gonna need beet tops. And how many beet tops are we needing here? Um, in fact, the ingredients of beet tops, onion tops, and dill, it says to use about four cups combined. Okay. So okay. it's whatever you have. And um, what worked great was I froze my beet greens. Okay. Till I was ready to make the soup and it was perfect. All right, so there, there's a tip for you right away. And you're just gonna season the salt to taste um, with salt and pepper. And this is gonna be the little bit different thing about here. You're gonna need eggs, about 18 hard boiled eggs, cut up, and milk. You're gonna need a quart and a half a quart, and then a quart of cream. So different ingredients, but again, fabulous soup. We're gonna try that. And to go along that with that, we have a orange date bars. And my Aunt Joanne, mom's sister Joanne, submitted this recipe. Thanks, Aunt Joanne. And these are gonna be fabulous. What you're gonna need for these are a half, or excuse me, one full cup of dates, half cup of sugar, two tablespoons of flour, a cup of water, and then we're gonna add in some nuts. It doesn't really say how many nuts though, but a half cup, just correct. Yeah. Okay, kind of what, what you like there. You're gonna need a cup of brown sugar, three fourths cup shortening, Two tablespoons milk, two eggs, a one and three quarters, one and three fourths cup flour, and a teaspoon of so, uh, baking soda, a pinch of salt, and a teaspoon of vanilla. So a lot of different ingredients there. Yeah. And the one ingredient you did forget was the orange slices. Oh, one cup of chopped and this up. is like the candy orange slices. These yeah. are excellent. Yes. So I just knew, that's how I knew how these boilers were going to be so good. <laughs> so what are we going to start with? Okay, well, uh, we're actually wanting to get the bars uh, made and put in the oven because we're going to bake them at 350 for 40 minutes, so okay. we want to get that in the oven. All right. And But the garden soup, uh, we take 10, uh, 12, uh, 10 potatoes and cube them. Okay. So I've got them here in my kettle, and you're going to want to start with a pretty good size kettle because... The, there's quite a bit of ingredients when you take a quart of cream, a quart and a half of milk, and uh, you know, all, all the, the ingredients that we're putting in there. All the other the ingredients. And, so do yes. Yeah, start. So okay. we want the potatoes to get uh, uh, soft, you know, pretty soft until we add the other stuff, okay. you know, whatever. So. Okay. so we got that on, and now we're going to come on over here. And in order to get moving along a little quicker, uh, you, you're you going to take a cup of chopped dates, okay. half a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of flour, and a cup of water. Okay. And you're going to cook that until the dates are cooked up. Okay. And I already did that. So, um, like I said, you're just going to cook that till you know, the dates are soft, so you can spread it on top of the batter. Okay. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, a cup of... Um, Orange chopped orange slices, and what this was was about a bag of um, well, I need a fork or a spoon here. Okay, <laughs> and uh, it was like I said, an eight eight ounce bag of orange slices. Okay, in that so, being I chopped them up and then you know they they get sticky, so you're gonna. And see, I was thinking when we were talking about this that we would be using actual oranges. Oh, okay. Like fruit oranges, not mm -hmm. candy, which, again, that just made it, like, 
I know these are going to be good. Absolutely. And that. So we're just going to get that mixed in there. And then the nuts is optional. So if you like nuts, go ahead and uh, add nuts. If you don't like nuts, just leave them out. Okay. And that. But um, I and do. It looks like you chopped up some walnuts. Yes, I did. And I do like nuts. So we're going to go ahead and add some in there. We're just mixing that up. And, and you know, as you see, when I'm mixing that, the orange slices do come apart oh, sure. and set in with that. So this here is a, probably a little bit more than I want to use. I'm going to use about a half a cup. So we'll put the rest aside there and mix that. And you want to start with this first because you want that to cool down a, a little bit because you don't uh, want that real hot to put on your batter. Okay. So uh, once you make cook up the dates, and you know, when you add the orange slices too and that, it does kind of help cool it down a little faster. And uh, they don't totally melt, but they just, you know, do get softer in there and stuff. So okay. we're just going to set that aside now. And it, uh, the size pan calls for an 8x12. Okay. So that's what we have there. And we definitely do want to spray that. All so. right. The first ingredients are we're going to start with, uh, you know, two eggs. But what I'm going to do, and it says a cup of brown sugar. So let's get the brown sugar in our mixture. And it says three-fourths cup uh, butter or shortening or whatever. Okay. I will use butter, but you can certainly use shortening. Or, you know, I think your butter Crisco would be a... A nice flavor to that too. Okay. So I'm going to start just mixing that up a little bit. And then we have two tablespoons of milk, okay. flour, vanilla, soda, and a little bit of salt. All right. And that, and we're going to put half the batter in our pan. And then we're going to put the date filling on top of that and the rest of the batter and bake it. Okay. And that's going to make great bars. All right. Okay, so I'm going to add that one egg there, and we'll get the other egg cracked open here. Get that all right. Mixed. And Aunt Joanne makes she's a, she's an excellent baker. She bakes quite a bit. Yes. So. I'm, I'm excited that she's, she's, she's actually submitted a recipe for us. Yes. And now that we're doing this and we might get some response from our audience, she might submit more for us. Absolutely, when they found out, find out how good these are. Well, and if we think about it, it's um, almost six years this December that we've been doing the show. And, you know, I've got seven sisters. And just not that long ago, I told Joanne, I says, you're the only sister that has not submitted a recipe for the show. So she did come up with one. <laughs> so I'm very proud of you, Joanne. <laughs> okay, so, and then I added the two tablespoons of milk. Okay. So we're just going to get that well blended here. So you, you, you do want to get your um, uh, wet, uh, you know, like the egg and the milk and all that mixed up. Uh, first with your sugar and that before you add the flour. Okay. Okay, so that's blended there. And it's one and three-fourths cup flour. Okay. So we're going to add that. So for somebody that doesn't... I usually follow the recipe, what, what it says on there. In, in, and on the recipe, it did say shortening. And I know that you did say, you know, butter or butter flavor Crisco. So it's basically all the same agent. It's Correct. not going to, it's going to make the bars, just it's going to taste different depending right. on what you use. And when they're saying shortening, it basically is Crisco. Okay. So you could use your white Crisco, you could use your butter flavor Crisco. And when, with me, when I'm doing baking, I just like butter. Okay. So uh, all of those will be the same consistency, will work the same. So it's just whatever okay. you choose to do. So then we're going to put a, a teaspoon of baking soda in there. Okay. 
and we're going to do a teaspoon of uh, vanilla. Okay. And you know me and my powdered vanilla, but you can use your liquid vanilla also. Okay. And then just a pinch of salt. So I'm just going to take a very little bit of salt there. Okay, now we're just going to mix that up here. And I'm going to just go ahead and check to see if my potatoes are boiling. And if not, I'll just turn up the heat a little bit. Because like I said, we want to get that, um, you know, the potatoes pretty soft. Okay. Because really when we start adding all our other ingredients, it's just a matter of getting heating it up. You don't have to simmer this for an hour or half hour, whatever. So Okay. Okay, and I just need to scrape my bowl. So this looks very similar to almost like a cookie dough. It's very thick. It, it's a little bit thicker batter, yes. But you know, most of your brown, or I shouldn't say brownie, your, uh, these are bars. They, it's, the batter is going to be thicker than a cake. Okay, okay. So, you know, there's the difference of that, you know. Okay. Stuff, so. Okay, so we got that there, and I'm going to just move that to the side. Okay. And we'll scrape off this here, the beaters. Being I don't have my little granddaughter Addison here to lick the beaters, which that is her favorite thing is any batter. Yes, she just loves so. And yes, we were just making blueberry muffins this past weekend, and I was putting too much in the muffin tins. So she, I wasn't giving her enough to taste, and <laughs> I know that that's probably not. I mean, when they say don't eat raw eggs, <laughs> you know, and that's what it is. But yeah, but who of us hasn't uh, done that? You know, you, you cake batter, cookie batter, you know. Sometimes it's the best way. It is. <laughs> you know, uh, definitely. I could tell a little story about myself um, growing up on the farm. And uh, on Saturdays, we usually did bake a cake. And I was the only one home at the time. And I decided I was going to bake a cake. So, but it was just a box cake. And I mixed it and and talk about liking the batter. I ate quite a bit of the batter, and then I looked at that, and I thought, oh my, this isn't enough batter to make a cake. <laughs> well, that was before I knew more about cooking or <laughs> baking. I added enough water to equal the amount of batter that I ate. Well, my cake didn't turn out very good. <laughs> I would have just been as well off eating the whole, all the batter and just say, I forgot to make a cake. <laughs> So did, did um, grandma or grandpa catch on what you actually did? You know, I can't remember all of that. I just remember what I did. <laughs> and that's, so I know where I get it from now. Yeah, that's right. So, so, so when, when you were pregnant with me, you probably ate a lot of raw batter. And okay, yeah, that explains so much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you still turn out pretty darn good. <laughs> Especially very special. Okay, so now we're going to just uh, spread that batter over the top of that. And it does make quite a bit of filling, you know, really, when you think of a cup of dates and that cup of orange slices. And it's, uh, it says to cool, and this has cooled, but you don't want it um, too cold, I mean, cold, cold because then it's going to be hard to spread. Okay. So when they say cool, you just cool it and then... So that um, you can actually probably touch it a little bit without burning yourself. Right. You know, and that it'll be easy enough to spread. So yeah, I need to find another spatula here.
I see this as a, as a really good, and, I, and you don't have to make this at a specific time of year, but this would be a nice holiday treat. Um, it would be. It would be very nice, and you think of dates, you think of orange slices and all of that that makes that. But, you know, it, like I said, you don't need a specific uh, occasion. You just make it because they are good. That's spread over there. You know, and it does make a fairly, you know, thick um, pan of bars. And I can hear my potatoes are boiling. I think I'll just go there and turn down the heat a little bit. Okay. Because it won't take too long for them to get soft because I did uh, cube them you know, made them fairly small. They're not real big pieces. Okay. So now we need to put the rest of this batter on top. And if I said we heated the oven to 350, okay, and we're going to bake them at 40 minutes. So those should be about ready when we're done with our soup. Oh. I mean, that soup is so unique. It's that, like... People are just going to have to try it. Absolutely. You just have to do it so that you know what it is. Because, like I said, myself, when I first heard of the ingredients, I thought, like, mm -hmm, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you can put everything in soup except the kitchen sink and come out with a great taste. So that's just what we got to do. Well, every recipe came from somewhere, and somebody tried, somebody experimented, and sometimes the, the things that you would never think of are the best things. Abs so, yep, absolutely. Just go into things with an open mind, and you'll be all right. Yep. There's so many things that are put together that you wouldn't think. Like years ago, I mean, you don't put purple and red together, or pink and red and stuff. And so those are some of the nice, or purple and green. And they look great. And, and that's just like I said, you know, times change, things that. So we all change and we experiment and have fun trying new things. There. Okay, so we're going to put that in the oven. Great. Oh. And like I said, that's, we're going to set the timer for 40 minutes. Oh, wrong button there. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm just going to get a fork here, and I want to just test the potatoes. Okay. They're starting to get soft, but do we want them a little softer? And you're going to add just enough water to cover the potatoes. We're not making, you know, full pot. I mean, a lot of water because we have our liquids, you know. We have a quart of cream and a quart and a half of milk and that, so we don't want... Uh, too much in there, so okay. We can. And now, what what I did here with um, I was able to get some. I didn't have beets, a garden, you know, for with beets. Um, Irene Heighthead was nice enough. She gave me some beet tops, and I washed them and I put them in in the freezer. And when they're froze, because it says chop your greens. Being they're froze, you could just squish them, and they just broke up really nice. You didn't have to worry about chopping. Okay, so this this is me not knowing too much about beets. Okay. I like beets, but they usually come in the canned variety that I don't think about. <laughs> so this is just the stems of the beets. Well, uh, there's some stems, on, but the leaves, okay. the actual leafy part of the... Uh, uh, there's, like I said, a little bit of stem, because, you know, you're going to have some stem, a stem in the middle of, of the leaf, but I didn't... You don't keep a lot of this stem that's past the green. Okay. You know, because that's a little bit, uh, you know, won't be quite as tender. So you okay. Wonder. And then um, dill. Again, dill I had in my garden. I had the dill. I froze it. And again, you crumble it up. So how much dill did you put in? Um, it's all, about a, a three-fourths to a cup of dill. Okay. In that. And again, it's a matter of preference. You know, the, you don't have to be exact with that. Okay. Uh, because it says four cups of 
the beet tops, the dill, and the scallions okay. put together. And I did use scallions, and I actually have them on the bottom here because bottom here, I started with that. Use the green part of the whole, that green onion, the scallions. Or that. But when they say scallions, don't waste the onion part of it. That's just going to give you some more flavor in there. So Okay. So then um, I didn't uh, take, uh, this is still kind of froze, but because I didn't want it to get real wilty or, uh, well, once I put it in the water, of course, it's going to just all wilt up, but it's just great. You know, it worked out great freezing and, you know, you don't have beet tops all year round. So that's just why you take it when you're in the garden and you freeze those things so you can make, you know, your soups just like your freezing beets and carrots and you don't waste anything do you need to do anything with carrot tops well if um, anybody... i know i'm asking crazy questions yeah. <laughs> and i'm sure there's viewers out there asking the same thing i am in yeah. my head <laughs> well you're asking but maybe we have a viewer out there that can give us some uh, <laughs> idea using um the greens of the carrot tops or, or just different yeah, things that absolutely. you just normally yeah. i would just yeah. wouldn't think of i would yeah. throw it away yeah well we got to learn how to utilize everything, right? That's right. That's great. So. Except the kitchen sink. <laughs> Except the kitchen sink. Well, we utilize that when we clean up after our mess here, after we bake and cook. So, so that that is starting, they're getting pretty soft here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this here mixture in here. And... And the thing is, you know, if your soup gets too, um, if it's thicker than what you like, just add a little bit of more milk, or you can even add a little bit of water to it if you want. Okay. But you don't, um, you know, some people like a thicker soup than others, and uh, I prefer, you know, my soup not quite as thick, so. The soupier soup. Right. So you can certainly soak that up with uh, crackers when you have a thinner soup or whatever, but that's just just me. I like that. So being that was cold, we're going to get that to heat up in here. Okay. And we're also going to add a, a cup of chicken stock just for a little extra flavor. Okay. So there is, so that again is a little bit more uh, liquid to it. So... I believe I have that here. And I just made up my own chicken stock here with some chicken base. I can smell the dill. Yeah. I love dill. It smells like a garden here. <laughs> yep, that's what it is, a garden soup. So get that in there. And then we're going to add a little bit of seasoned salt, um, a little bit of... Uh, pepper and now all of this is to your taste you add um, as much as you want but the thing is too you can always add more at the table don't get carried away with your salt and, absolutely and that and stuff so i have the seasoned salt here and being it is a pretty good going to be a pretty good size kettle here i'm going to put about a, a good teaspoon of um, seasoned salt in it okay and probably about a teaspoon of pepper. And our salt we have over here. Let's oh, okay. put that there. And I'm going to do a scant teaspoon in there. Because, you know, like I said, with salt, you can always uh, add more as it goes along and, and you need it. So we want to bring this to a good boil. Okay. Because once we add our uh, cream and uh, milk, we don't, we're not going to really boil it from there. We're going to just, uh, uh, you know, heat it really, you know, to, to heat but not boiling. And, you're, and it's going to be ready to serve then. Okay. And stuff, so. But while that is coming to that, we're going to just chop our eggs. See, the, up until, this is the, up to, up to this point that, that was a garden soup. This has turned into the farm soup now. <laughs> it, it, like I said, it, it's different. It's unique. But so I'm just going to use my. I mean, you you just chop it, but just using your egg slicer and putting it both ways. Uh, 
you really can chop that up really fine. But look at the, the nutritional value you're adding to the soup with, well, yeah. with the eggs and you know, with your greens. Um, See, I think this is, you got protein in these. Do you think somebody misread the recipe one time that there's supposed to be like um, cubed beef in there? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and now they didn't have beef and they substituted eggs? Or it was supposed to be a chicken and uh, they didn't have to... Chicken. So they thought, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? And right, so they, they thought, well, came uh, from a chicken. That's right. Oh, uh, but... Yeah, and it... Um, like I said, when I had that bowl, uh, even the texture of the eggs was just, you know, fine. I, you would, I didn't think of it as, you know... Oh, just, that was just an egg. Eggs. Yeah. yeah, and stuff, so... It's, we're going to bring those eggs up here. Well, and, you know, we're discussing too, thinking, um, and we do know that this recipe come from, I mean, Denise Brossard got it from uh, somebody that actually did create the recipe. Oh. And that, so, and I'm thinking, well, did they live on a farm? They had abundance of eggs and... Why not put it in soup? I don't sure. know. <laughs> well, again, all recipes started somewhere. That's right. And, you know, the most unique ingredients, you like you said, can be your most tasty uh, recipes. Right. Don't leave sugar out of cookies, though. I you have know. learned that, that that doesn't really taste that good. That do doesn't work so well, does it? They look like cookies. They don't so much taste like cookies. Okay, got to get... The last couple of eggs here, so that I get them. I don't it's just think, a lot of eggs. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to forget and put in a, a whole egg. <laughs> Although I do think it would cook up somewhat. I, I'm not quite sure what it would do. See, you would scare the grandkids saying it's an eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> It's eyeball soup. Yeah, it's eyeball soup. That's, uh. well, I'm making a lot of fun out of this recipe, and it's all in, it's all in good humor, Denise. Don't don't take this the <laughs> wrong way. Uh, it's just so unique. I have to just mm -hmm. talk about it. Absolutely. And like I said, if I hadn't known how good it is, just because she had given me some, I mean, uh, I don't think it would have been something I would have ever tried. Or whatever, but being it is so unique, you know, sometimes you just got to be bite the bullet and try something very different. Okay, so we, I think we got them all in there. Yep, got that all cut up there, very nice. Um, let's just go over here and see how this is going. And, you know, we do forget what nutritional value we have in leaves, you know, like beet tops and, uh, you know, your different, your leafier lettuce is a lot better than your iceberg lettuce. Right. So all those things are, do have a purpose. And that, so, like I said, I just wanted to get that really hot and just poking my potatoes a little bit here. I just want to give them about two more minutes. Okay. And then we can, uh, you know, add our other ingredients. And, you know, it's going to be boiling, but, you know, once we add our uh, milk and cream, it's going to really tone the, the heat, and then we're going to just bring it back up to, uh, you know, heating, not boiling. Okay. So just to make it hot. But, you know, we have uh, 29 more minutes on our bars, so we don't have to be in a big hurry with the soup. No, but I want to try it. Oh, you're anxious to try it. Okay. I am anxious to try it. This okay. is something new, and I want to try it. All right. And like I say, it does make a big cat a kettle, so I have to, um, I promised uh, some of the gals at work that I would bring some of this, because again, they're all just thinking this. And your mother-in-law, Ruth, I'd seen her today, and she's wondering what I was making tonight on the show, and I told her, and she says, got to have have Rhonda bring me a little bowl. She's just got to taste <laughs> I gotta it. I got to try that. <laughs> you got to try it. Right. See, that's what everybody's going to be saying is, I'm going to try that. 
you just you just got to try it and that and what's nice with this too and and like most soups you don't have to be exact with everything you don't have to say i have to have uh so much onion or so much dill or green tops or potatoes you just add in what you got and stuff so i need more of a measurement you need more of a measurement well okay that's me that's you <laughs> <laughs> so i'm going to turn that down a little bit here and we're going to go ahead and uh this and you know just check in here you know making sure that we have anything because i'm going to add the eggs you know you know at, at the end oh whatever, okay we so. don't okay yeah just you know when the that's coming to a point boiling or i mean just to heat it up there so uh, it says a quart of heavy whipping cream And to save another measuring, right, we're just going to pour a quart of milk in here. Oh, you're and, so smart. Uh, no, you just, you want to get all the cream out of there too. You don't want to leave that, any of that in there. There's the real reason. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, fill that about halfway up yet. Okay. There we go. And now we're going to add that, the rest of that. That makes a lot of soup. It is a big kettle of soup. And you, you think with all those greens in it, it's going to look like a green soup <laughs> and that. But it's not, you know, you got your milk and your cream and it's going to be creamy. It's not going to be, you know, just like green. See, this like is camouflage though, really technically. The cream in the milk camouflages the white eggs. That's good. That's, yep. But, you know, the eggs do make it creamier, though, too. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, and that, and it is going to give you some consistency, some more base, you know, that it uh, won't be just, you know, thin soup. Because right now, when you're looking at this, it, uh, it, it's fairly thin. But too, you know, any soup that you have will always get thicker as, you know, you have it set, you have yes. leftover and that, it just will. And the potatoes in there gives it a little bit of starch, which also is a thickening right. agent in there. So it will get thicker. Okay. So we're just going to keep that on very low until I see it come to um, almost a boiling. Then we're going to add our eggs and... We're going to try it. You're going to try it. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So we'll be back with our viewers shortly. All right. Our soup is hot, but it's not boiling. So we're going to go ahead and add our um, 18 eggs that are chopped. Okay. And then we'll just uh, bring that up a little bit to, uh, you know, heat, heating that up a little bit again because that did cool that down. Okay. And just there. And... It looks like we what, have about a minute left on our bars, so we're going to be able to take those out. And there will be a little bit of green, uh, you know, the, the bee tops in there. It's not, you know, all creamy. Right. And that, but, uh, you know, some people like the flavor of onions or even like dill or something, and they don't want to see the consistency. You know, they puree it, and they can put that in... Uh, in the soup so if you don't like the look of something puree it and put it in you got the flavor but you don't see you know, like with tomatoes i love chunks of tomatoes but a lot of people don't right so. right anyway that's just something you can do uh, our bars like they're done so let's take those out i'll have you open up the oven there okay yeah no i should oh they feel done they're Oh, springs great. back to, springs back to the touch there so um, I think I'm going to just put okay them over here and that'll have a chance cool and then we'll be able to I know it's going to be really hot but I am going to cut uh, okay. a little corner out just to show our viewers of how great those bars look with that filling inside okay and that so we want to thank Denise Rosart for submitting this soup recipe. I, I actually think that it's going to be actually very wonderful. And Anjouan for, for submitting these bars. Don't they look fabulous? 
To get these recipes, just go to Consolidated's website, www.ctctel.com. Thank you always to the workshop for being our sponsor. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great evening.